Hello and welcome back to Massalia Tales. On the last episode we saw Mediolanum take some attacks from some enemy armies coming in with very small numbers and getting themselves destroyed. Then we saw Xenon moving west against Telosa, the aim to retake it by drawing out the Averni hordes into battle. It was successful, drawing them onto Xenon's fortifications, where we had a fairly hard fought battle, taking some serious losses as the enemy tried to batter their way inside, but eventually managed to surround and defeat them. The question left over from this battle is whether Xenon can go on to take Telosa with his remaining forces, and what the Averni have left or up their sleeve next. Let's continue and find out. The victory over the Arverni warband cemented Zenon's name in the history of Massalia and gave him sufficient clout to dominate the council if he so wished. But like any great craftsman, he was more interested in honing his technique than exploring where his previous achievements could take him. There was still the business of Tolosa to liberate and the Arverni homelands to suppress. Zenon did not seek wealth or power from these achievements, knowing that he had plenty of both. He sought only a noble victory to secure the future of his city. But of course, the council saw him as a gambler, refusing to quit while ahead. They knew this would be his downfall. So the Arverni have been beaten at least in one battle and now the question for Xenon is can he go on to take Telosa? In the meantime, the Celtic Confederation are sending forces to attack Mediolanum, but this time they just set up a siege rather than going right into an assault. A better move from them because once again they've brought only a very tiny army. Now, you might remember that Jelon's forces had been poisoned by an enemy agent and were suffering losses from attrition, and now it's even worse, they've just managed to catch, I think, a natural plague right after recovering from those previous diseases. So now Jelon's forces are going to be brought down to pretty much nothing. The situation in Mediolanum isn't particularly good. The garrison is all but gone, only a tiny force besieging it, but big enough that the completely depleted garrison can't fight it off. So we're just going to sit there and let them besiege it, because after all, all I was really doing there was to attempting to buy time to stop the enemy coming towards Massalia. The real fate of Mediolanum doesn't truly matter. Now what does matter is whether Xenon can get a handle on Telosa. I move up and see that there's a couple of Arverni stacks hanging around. One of them only has one regiment, the other one has only a couple. The garrison in Telosa is at about two-thirds strength, so not too powerful. A lot of the units in there will be extremely weak in, compar in comparison to Xenon's, so it's not Ready too much battle. of a problem, even if they can get a numerical advantage over us. So I thought the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe this single stack that's standing in front of me out of the way. And of course, because it's standing right next to the Kill city, the as I attack, the garrison will come out to join the battle. The balance bar ends up being really far in my favour. I actually was surprised at how far in my favour it was. I decided to auto-resolve the assault in order to just get past this small battle quickly. It's a decisive victory, but actually with more losses than I expected given our initial advantage. The enemy only lost twice as many troops as we did. I expected it to be more of a complete rout for the enemy forces. The good news is that a lot of the enemy's garrison troops are now gone. This of course means I can just attack the town and the garrison will pretty much not be there, but they do have that other general standing behind Forgive the town me, who will I join cannot. the fight. The question is whether that will Ready really tip the orders. balance bar in their favour, especially because Zenon's forces are really depleted, all of his heavy infantry are in the red, he's really low on troops. But as they go into attack, the balance bar yet again is really in our favour, even more than in the last battle, so I decide I'll just quickly auto-resolve this as well to take Tolosa back. This is a fantastic move because we can now effectively end the miniature crisis we've been going through because Tolosa will increase our food supply and allow us to resume taxation of Massalia, uh, the, well, the province of Provincia with Massalia in it, which will dramatically improve our income and get us back into the black. We're currently on <laughs> minus 60 a turn, not too bad actually. So I had first had to look at the public order to see what the effect of conquering Telosa would be because the question was should Xenon stay in the town, would it be too much of a problem for him to garrison in the town? I want him to because he'll regenerate troops much much faster sitting in the town. Luckily it looked like it was okay and as I said I'm going to tax the province so now our finances are back in order, the food supply swells, everything is pretty much fine. You can also see here that Provincia has a more than 50% slave population, so there are so many slaves that I really need to stop taking slaves in battles. I was wondering whether this recovery would allow me to tax my remaining holdings in Cisalpania, but unfortunately that completely destroys the economy if I was to do that, so they are going to remain untaxed, pretty much ungoverned whatsoever by the Massalian forces. 
Now, I wanted to see whether the Arverni would accept peace, given that we've defeated them and reversed the gains they've made. We've destroyed them in three battles, removing many of their generals from the picture, but they were not willing to accept peace even in these terms, so they want to continue the fight. The next diplomatic action I took was with the Romans. I wanted to see if I could get a diplomatic, a defensive, sorry, alliance with them, and they said they would with a high chance. I decided to throw in a demand for 2,000. They accept that offer. Fantastic news. Some free money and a defensive alliance with a more powerful faction and the historic ally of the Massalians. A very sneaky diplomatic arrangement. I don't really know what made them accept that, but perhaps we'll find out later on. Tell your master, Melanthius was it, that his offer is both insulting and patronizing to the highest order. But the people of Rome happen to be in a position of temporary vulnerability, so the support of another proud republic even if it's one of petty Greeks, is appreciated. Know though, that once the current crisis with the Carthaginians is over, Rome will not have forgotten the daring your master has shown in demanding tribute from his betters. His true intentions have been laid clear, and for this he may soon find himself at odds with a good Roman sword. The next thing I'm wondering is what the Arverni have. They obviously have something because they're not willing to end the war. So let's check out what sort of forces they have by sending Ifianasa up to uh, scout out what's going on in Burdigala. We can see they have uh, a d dead stack that's running away from the battles. They're probably going back towards their capital at Nemesos. They have a fleet at Burdigalia. Not really worried about that because it's not going to do anything to me. They have a small army coming down from Nemesos. I'm not sure if they're actually planning to attack with this army. It's definitely not big enough to attack. Possibly they're just going to bring that army o over to Burdigala to garrison it. So I don't think there's any sort of incoming invasion from the Averni front, at least none that I can see so we're safe on this front for now. Now I was also thinking that Jelon needs to finally get into the action and I have an opportunity to do so because there's pretty much going to be a pending invasion coming from the east. Midialanum and Genua won't hold for long. There's even the opportunity possibly to send Jelon out to go and garrison Genua if he can build up enough forces to make it worth bothering to try and defend it because the enemy are coming at us with such small armies maybe I actually can hold at least Genua for a long time at least until Zenon can get back in and clear up the situation completely I don't have enough money of course to have two full field armies so Jelon's forces need to be a weaker lighter force which is pretty much uh, not going to be able to be attack just try and hold positions and possibly take a lot of losses in the process but keep territory so that's the plan for him. Xenon needs to regenerate troops. You can see he's doing so now. It's going to be a couple of turns, three turns, before he can get back to full strength. And he really needs to do that. He really needs to get the basis of his army, his heavy infantry, back up to strength. So for now, I'm just going to stand around and see what happens. Now, as we move into the next turn, the Celtiberian Confederation offer me a non-aggression pact, an interesting offer. I think this is because these Celtiberians are also at war with the Arverni. So although they would be a obvious enemy for me, we are improving our diplomatic relations and I think that's going to be to both of our advantages. Hopefully the Celtiberians will actually help me out against the Arverni. I don't know if they're actually doing any operations against them at the moment. A little bit later, we see a Sequani army appear. We've been at war with them for ages, but never seen any of their forces. And finally, it looks like they're going to move into Cisalpania, which will definitely finish off Mediolanum. And uh, Gelon too has pretty much no hope of stopping them if they choose to continue on towards Massalia. With this threat in mind, I chose to recruit some cheap light forces to fill out the ranks of Jelon's army just in case he does get an opportunity to try and hold the enemy. He's also developed the trait of liking Romans, which is spreading Roman influence throughout our territory. Perhaps not so bad now that we're friends with them anyway. Moving on, we see Arverni troops moving into Burdigala. More Arverni troops, I should say, and they also begin recruiting troops as they arrive. It seems they are going to increase their strength in this province, which could be a problem for Zenon. The Sequani move into Cisalpania, not very far though, only just over the border. But then Midialanum has a uh, rebellion. There's also a new faction joining our enemies, the Pictones. I didn't know who they were actually when I saw this message, I'll have to look it up. 
We also learn that Midilanum is about to surrender and that Delon's forces have been poisoned and that Telosa's wells have been poisoned and an attrition report comes up. Overall, a good turn if you like bad news. So Jelon now has some more strength, but the troops he had before are now all but gone, just tiny regiments. He's really in no fit state. And we can see the rebellion in Midilanum is the Insubras, funny enough. They're back for more, attempting to take Midilanum from either us or the Confederation, I guess both in this case. And I don't know what the Sequani are planning to do. I don't know whether they're planning to steal Midilanum from the Confederation, or more likely, they're going to come down and attack Genua. That's what I think they're going to do. You can see they have a pretty substantial army, not as big as it could be, and not as powerful looking as it could be either. There is a hope that Jelon would be able to stop them, especially if he teams up with garrison forces in Genua, who have a good number of hoplites to be able to form a good line against the enemy's light spear forces. But if that happens, we'll see what we can do. Genua is in an okay state to hold off against enemies. Its garrison is fairly full, but uh, I guess I'm just not sure about it overall. So I looked up who the Pictonies were. They were this uh, tribe to the northwest, allied with the Arverni. We don't know anything about them other than that they are now at war with us. So I decided to treat them in the same way that I've treated the Sequani, e.g. to ignore them because they're quite far away and we know nothing about them. And I think the chance of them actually coming to attack us is quite low. And if they do, we'll probably know about it far in advance. So I'm going to ignore them for now. Xenon is still building up his strength and he's nearly at full strength actually. So I was thinking he does have an opportunity in the very near future to uh, go and attack Burdigala, perhaps take the battle in into Averni territory. This idea seemed quite attractive to me, so I decided to try it out just by moving up to the border to, to start with. The question is whether I actually attack the city itself, which isn't particularly heavy de heavily defended. I probably could take it in a siege assault, although I probably would also take a lot of losses. Not sure I'm willing to gamble with taking losses, especially because we are still in a somewhat precarious situation. I decided to check out what the Averni have in the fog of war. They have one more small army, but of critical importance, Nemesos, their capital, has nothing in it. This was very interesting news, and they also have nothing to the east of that either. It seems the Alverni are pretty low on forces. Xenon actually probably outmatches them, even if they combined all of their forces together. Seeing this, I decided to try and use Blitz Blitzkrieg tactics. I'm just going to attack and try and wipe out these small groups before they grow in size and push straight northeast towards their capital, ignoring the fortified city of Berdigala. The first army I reach has a massive disadvantage against me. I'm going to dispatch it using an auto-resolve, picking the option that causes me to lose the fewest troops, because that's what's important at this time. Unfortunately, though, I actually did lose quite a lot of troops, 500. A lot of these heavy infantry regiments in particular took the brunt of the casualties, which is annoying because those are my best guys that I'm going to need if I have to fight a serious battle. So this somewhat changed my mind, but seeing that the next enemy army was so weak and that the enemy's capital was completely undefended, I thought even with my reduced numbers I probably can defeat both that army and the garrison force, take the capital, and then what I really wanted to do was attempt to sue for peace once I'd taken the capital, because I don't want to be fighting this war. Xenon has plenty of other things to be worried about, especially all the eastern tribes who just refuse peace with us all the time. Perhaps the Arverni are feeling more civilized and I can go back to fighting the true barbarians in the Alps. So I'm going to move on this army. It falls back, which I guess is to be expected. The problem is it falls back right to where the garrison forces are, so I have to face them and the garrison at the same time. But as I said, I think I would be able to do this. So uh, I'm going to move back slightly just to get within one turn's march of Tolosa if I do have to fall back into my own territory due to events going on during the end turn sequence. But uh, overall, next turn, we may be able to take the Alverni capital, which is excellent news. The downside of me moving Xenon off into enemy territory like that is that a lot of the pressure to resolve what's going on in the east is now going to fall on Jelon's forces, or his lack of forces, I should say. I realized I need to actually just um, get rid of my bank account, invest in heavy forces for Jelon, make him into a proper field army, not as big as Xenon's, but perhaps similarly powerful. It will mean I'm going to have almost no income and no money, but at this point, that's better than having no provinces and it losing the them to uh, forces I can't fight against. Now, interestingly, the Sestani, my old enemy, careful. offer a deal. They want military access in exchange for access to them. Obviously, me having military access to their lands is pretty much useless to me, so I'm wondering what they want to do with military access to mine. The uh, honest answer is they might be going to attack Arverni, because they are at war with them, and they'll have to move through Tolosa to do that. 
but it does see that, that say that, that they're devious here and I was worried that perhaps they were just going to take military access for other purposes and perhaps they do plan at some point to resume their war with me. I decided to give them the benefit of the doubt and offer them the deal if they also had trade. They refused that so I guess that was in poor faith really. Mediolanum has finally fallen and the Celtic Confederation chase off the Insubres rebels. I don't know if they actually defeated them, they probably did. Suddenly the Pictones arrive in Nemesos with two stacks. This was suddenly a huge problem. When I saw that first stack I thought that's fine. A second stack comes in out of nowhere. A massive army which Xenon would struggle to beat. I fall back, it pursues me. I thought I might just have to face this stack against which I would have quite a good chance. But he moved back so far that we're now in range of the garrison forces at Nemesos. Sauce. So now we still have to fight two armies at once, one coming from behind us, one from the front. The one from the front is moderately powerful and of course Xenon's forces are only at half strength in terms of the main line infantry. So we need to find a way to win out uh, utilizing cavalry and skirmishers, but the enemy have both a cavalry and a skirmish advantage. This is quite a pickle I've got myself in. Let's see if Xenon can do anything about it. Sir, the councillor, sir, what about the Pictones? Yes, what about them? They have declared war and marched to aid the Alverni. Their surest route takes them right behind Xenon. He'll be cut off. We have to send word to him. My boy, Xenon is a mighty commander, a hero even. There is no need to let a great mind such as his be concerned with such trivial details as this. I am sure that if what the people say about him is true, we shall hear news of 10,000 dead Pictones by the end of the month. Yes, I've never been so sure. The engagement begins. The first thing we can hope for is to gain some form of a terrain advantage over our enemy. That's going to be our first hope. The regiments are looking a little bit depleted as we can see, but I've got a nice position for them at least. We've got this ridge overlooking the enemy's approach all downhill towards the main enemy formation right at the bottom here, which is now making its way up towards us, leading with some light forces. They're going to form up more properly once they reach us. They even have some of those dreaded mercenary bands who I can never seem to defeat. They're just too good against Hoplites inconvenient. The uh, Alverni forces are coming in from the north, so they're not quite behind us. Actually, both forces are going to attack vaguely frontally. The Alverni forces, though, have a flanking advantage. They can come around our position because I am going to face mostly towards the oncoming Pictonius forces since they have the strongest fighting units. So here they are a little bit closer, you can see they've formed up in more of a formation at least. Cavalry on both wings and skirmishers and the spearmen coming up in the middle. Not in an actual line, which they probably should be, but it looks like they at least attempted to form up a line. Bunting together a load here in the middle as well. I think they actually uh, are going to cross paths and all focus on one part of our line as they come in. The Alverni have a much neater formation. I guess they really are more civilized than those other barbarians. In the middle here are their most worrying units. Their garrison warriors, heavy swordsmen, who will do very well against my hoplites. The only thing I have defending my right flank against the advance of this enemy attack group is this one unit of my own very heavy swords. They're ready to charge down and try and delay the enemy whilst these light spears might be able to help them out. The main line, as I said, is facing against the Pictonius advance. A nice thick hoplite line that should be able to hold for a long time, especially facing downhill. What really uh, worries me is the fact the enemy can surround me if they like, especially with their cavalry. My main hope for victory is to get my cavalry around the back of them and start routing the enemy units one by one. The problem is the enemy have heavy cavalry on their right flank and of course all of the enemy's reinforcements on the left flank who outflank my cav once I attack. So both flanks are in danger. The enemy are making their advance. Can I pull a victory out of this one? Well, you'll have to wait to find out till next time. The battle-hardened daemons of Polymus idolized Xenon, seeing him not just as their general but as their father. As such, they were willing to follow him almost without question, and so they did as Xenon pushed them at a hard march in a race to secure the weak Arverni capital and bring a swift end to the war. But for reasons lost to history, Xenon appeared to be oblivious to the approach of a huge and powerful warband from the Pictonis tribe, despite clear records of its declaration of war being found in earlier writings from the city. Whatever the reason, the surprise arrival left Xenon in an unimaginable position. Now crushed between barbarian hordes, his survival was no longer a given.